Hello everybody, it's George here. Gorgeous, gorgeous, beautiful June day. Uh, I think it's the 28th, something like that. It's a Sunday, it's my day off. Uh, heading over, meet up with some friends of mine, we get some tapas. Uh, it's gonna be a really good afternoon. Enjoy the day. So, I actually, Got the LG dual screen. Yep. Uh, it's a interesting and very unique phone. Uh, the LG V50. You can get the dual screen case on it, and also the um, G8X. The LG GS. Also, you can get the dual screen. But this time with the V60, you could buy include the V60 in it or without the dual screen. You know, it's about a hundred dollar difference. So even if you get just the V60, you get it for a hundred bucks. So it's not that bad. Um, the V60 is eight hundred dollars. It's available on uh, Verizon, AT&T. T-Mobile, Sprint, and U.S. Cellular, so five companies, except for Verizon, where it's $9.50, just the phone. Um, T-Mobile and Sprint are the only two carriers that you can get the phone with the case, um, and it's $100 more, so it's $900, and like I said, for $100 more, you get the case, it's not a big issue. And the dual screen case comes with a adapter that you can use. It's like a magna, mag lock type of connector to USB-C. And they did that um, and just so, you know, the cables won't, you know, break your connection that easy or try to prevent it from uh, uh, breaking the, uh, the connector itself. It's a safety feature, kind of like you see on uh, Apple computers. They have the bag lock uh, type of device too. It's the same thing, um, and you could get another one for like nine bucks through LG. It's not a big problem. Um, it's a big, beefy phone. I mean, look how big it is. It's bigger than my hand. Um, the specs. It's pretty beefy. Uh, they did a pretty good job. Uh, 6.8 inch screen, um, 1080p uh, uh, AMOLED display. Both screens, just to let you know. Um, 60 hertz refresh rate. Uh, let's see, 5,000 milliamp battery. You could do two days pretty pretty easy. It's, a, it's probably the best battery life out there from what I've seen. Uh, wireless charging capability and both the wired and wireless is fast charging capable as well. Um, it has the Snapdragon 865, 2.8 gigahertz. Octa core processor, 128 gigs of RAM, no, 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 not RAM, 128 gigs of ROM storage, 8 gigs of RAM memory, random access memory. Um, it has about 99 gigs of storage available. Get the phone. There is a, a, quite a bit of bloatware, not a whole lot like Samsung, but you can uninstall most of those software. So, and it's very clean. You know, it's Android 10, uh, expandable memory, two terabytes. That's awesome, two terabytes. Um, the 
the camera, 64 megapixels. Um, it has a two times zoom optical, 10 digital, and a 13 megapixel wide angle camera. And it has uh, a third uh, camera for depth, uh, like a depth uh, kind of sensors to see how far out you create that 3D effect on their time of flight, that's what they call it. Uh, and a dual uh, LED uh, flash up. Uh, front facing camera is a 10 megapixel. And people say, well, it doesn't have a telezoom. Most people don't use it. People who do have it, like I said, don't use it. It's more point and and shoot. You know, not many people will zoom so much, so it doesn't happen. What can I say? Um, it uh, has 5G capability and it does the uh, Sprint 5G and the T-Mobile 5G. Because as you know, Sprint and T-Mobile is now merged. Uh, it has a lot of LTE bands. Uh, it's category 22, so it is a higher bandwidth LTE, advanced LTE. So you can get very fast LTE speeds. Actually, uh, I have still my Verizon phone, and this is my Sprint phone, because I work for Sprint. Um, the LTE on Sprint is better than Verizon. And with the 5G, I'm getting even better speeds. So, and the coverage, to be honest, works. It works everywhere. I don't see any problems. I don't see any issues. Uh, coverage is great. It's international capable, GSM broadband, WCDMA. Um, let's see, what else? A 3.5 millimeter Jag, which has the 32 bit quad DAC, which is awesome. I love that. The quad DAC is something I highly recommend. Wired headsets is better than wireless. I don't care what people say. We ask professionals, what do they use in studios? Wired. If you pay $300 to $500 or $1,200 headset that is wired, I like to use it on my phone, and I want something that has a better sound quality. It's amplified. It, it also has a four-channel audio sequencing, so it provides a better, crisper, far superior sound quality than you will ever get through a Bluetooth headset. So I'm glad that they kept it. And I haven't seen any of the flagship ones this year come out with them. So they need to stop complaining. Um, it has four mics on that puppy. Four mics on that phone. So you got one on top, bottom, left, right. ASMR capability. You know, you've seen those... Uh, uh, Twitch and YouTube girls, uh, those e thoughts going whispering like uh, back and forth up and down. That's what ASMR is. So you can hear it in all different areas. Kind of like we have a surround sound uh, capability. Uh, two uh, speakers, uh, one on the top, one on the bottom. It's about, I think the one on the top is one watt and the one on the bottom is 1.3 watts. So it's super loud and powerful. You can get really great sound quality out of the phone. Um, the camera itself, other than the specs that I told you, it does have a great advantage over some of the other phones out there. It has the manual mode, which gives you the ability to make better adjustments on your photos and videos. Uh, there are times where you want to make changes to picture. If it's not as clear, you try to rely on software. And they say, oh, that's something that LG has to get better. I go, why? It's 
fine as is, and if I want to make better adjustments, I can do it myself. And having the ability to adjust it myself is better. Professionals like that. That's why when you get those SLR cameras, a professionals want to tweak it as much as possible to get the best quality picture you can get. That's why a lot of YouTubers I know go out and use LG V series phones because of that ability. And, and I'll give you an example also. When they do videos in the professional mode or the manual mode, you should say, uh, there's on the top left hand corner, as I put it out on my camera, uh, there's a little uh, square bar over there that will show the volume levels left and right. And it will also tell you the bit rate, you know, mega uh, bits per second, how many bytes of information you're going to use, uh, which is valuable because you want to know how much storage and you're saying, oh, you know, it's getting close, you know, I shouldn't use as much, you know, things like that. That's something that I appreciate because as someone that will use videos, it can be helpful to a professional and someone like myself so I know is the sound being balanced out correctly. You know, I know I'm going to get you know, a little bit more on one side over the other depending on the position I am on my phone. You know? Even on my Motorola phone it has multiple, it has three mics which is kind of nice that it has that ability. You know, on the bottom it has the two, one on the top so it does have the ability to do that stereo capabilities. So LG does a better job on um, And then uh, the other things, um, it does has pen capability, so you can use a stylus pen. It has that additional software, just like the LG Stylus series does, the, you know, and it's wonderful that it has that ability on there. And you can do what you can, like on uh, the Note series, not exact, it's not Bluetooth capable, but you use something like the Bamboo Stylus Pen. Uh, it's $100, but it's worth it if you do like using stylus capability on your phone. And I would say, why not? But if you don't have to, you don't need to utilize it. Does the hover over the uh, screen like the Note Series does? So it's a really useful pen, the passive type of pen. Uh, LG 60. And the main thing about that phone is the dual screen. That's the, one of the big reasons why you should get the phone. If not, you can do it without it. That's perfectly fine. But the style, you know, the whole idea of getting the style and the look and feel of having two screens is wonderful. Why would you use? Well, you can use it to multitask. Let's say you use it for work. You can have your email on one side, and let's say you have your uh, Zoom app that you use a Zoom presentation. So this way you know what type of information you need from one screen to the other. That's a great thing to use, multitasking for work. Another thing is using the keyboard uh, when you want to text something or use the keyboard for web browsing or word processing application. You can have the keyboard on the bottom and the application on the top do it in, you know, landscape mode instead of portrait mode. That's excellent. That gives you more ability to type, especially people if we have fat or fingers, or they call sausage fingers. You know, to me, I think that's a wonderful thing. Um, and gaming. Oh my God, having the ability to have a gamepad. It's like having the biggest Nintendo DS, the best one to ever have. I'm surprised Nintendo hasn't struck up a deal with LG to do this. So you can have the bottom screen for the gamepad and the actual game on the top. That is a great way of playing the game. I tried some of the games already on there and the different game pads, the racing one, uh, uh, RGP, 
game. I've got the names on top of my head right now. But they have some. They have four games already pre-installed that you can play on. Uh, but some are pretty chunky sizes that take up you know a lot of space in there. But even though I don't care, I, I just want to try and see how well it works out. And I love the ability with the game pen. I think it's a great addition to use that type of build. So the screen, the screens on there is vivid. It's bright, real glass five, uh, strong. Both screens are at the same resolution. Um, the one in the front that's not open, it's Grill Glass 6, but it only has an LED. It's pretty hard to see. It's kind of low at the moment, but it has a black and white LED that tells you the time, notification, uh, signal strength, and battery length on there, which is great. So you don't have to open up fall to see or what time is it, or what kind of notifications you know, things like that um, and you can flip it over around and put it like a feed downward so you can see your videos you know, if you want to without having any of those pop uh, pop out accessories you no know, need it has its own built in which is kind of cool and you can fold it all the way to, to the back without having to, you know, want to use just the one main screen. You can turn it off and you can uh, just use the one screen itself and that's that. Um, and you can swap back and forth the apps and all that. Now the widescreen mode is something only eight apps are available currently right now that you use the wide mode. Like browse the web, uh, email, your, G, your uh, Google Maps, and stuff like that. But you'll say, "Well, George, it has that divider, that the full, you know, the, the separation in the middle. Why would I use it? It's kind of cumbersome." Yes, in a way, but it's still usable in my opinion because you could do it, rotate it, and then it's not as inclusive. It's more this way, or you know, horizontal instead of vertical. So it depends. It depends on how you use them. Uh, in my opinion, it's still better uh, using it in this manner. So that's good. Um, let's see, and I think that's it. Um, I've had it for all, uh, it's getting close to almost a week. I like it. It works. Uh, I'll see how it goes after a month, and after a month use, I'll give you a more in-depth opinion on it. But so far, it's a great phone. You know? Yes, it does not have uh, quad HD 1440p either 60, you know, it's uh, not a 90 or 120 hertz refresh rate. Who cares? You know, I don't need it. You know, I, I've been using my Motorola one. It has the same resolution and everything. It works great, and it's still buttery smooth. You know, I'm going to hold on to it. I'm not going to sell it. It's still a great phone. I can use it on a, a prepaid company. I use it as a backup or something, you know. Um, I mean, the main reason why LG did this because the V60 had a quad HD, uh, uh, quad HD version 1440p on there, and I don't believe it was. I think it was 90 hertz, but they went back down because of the battery life. They wanted to have better battery life. They sacrificed that for a better battery life, but you still get a better screen resolution, and it's an AMOLED display like Samsung uh, screens are. So you're still getting a greater quality uh, screen resolution to sacrifice for a better battery. So to me, it makes more sense that the other thing is, oh, it doesn't have facial unlock. 
Really? I... To me, using the fingerprint uh, on the screen is good enough. Or I could put my four-digit code or six-digit code, whatever it is, as well. Do you need it? No. Is it nice to have it? Yes. But you can get a third-party app and you can enable it. Problem solved. Yeah. Uh, oh, it doesn't have reverse charging. So, most people don't use it. I, I sold Samsung phones for almost a year now, and I haven't heard one person say, oh, I love the reverse charging. No. Uh, it makes no sense. You know, for some people, oh, it charge for 15 minutes so you can have some battery life for the other person. Great. Get a battery now. To me, reverse charging is not a must-have. People, people these that do phone reviews that they're not like legit people phone reviewers uh, do a better job than the actual phone reviewers and all these types of companies and uh, uh, like uh, CNET or uh, Pocket Now, some of those type. They, they do the, oh, but it doesn't have the 1440p, you know, screen resolution. It doesn't have the 120, 90 hertz refresh rate. Oh, it doesn't have reverse charging. It doesn't have facial unlock. Who cares? I, I saw more people loving the phone and recommending it than they did not recommending it. They, they need to keep up with the game with the other uh, flagship phones. What for? They do a better job. People care about three things. All right? The power, the ability, and how fast the actual phone can process applications. Battery life. All right? And the ability to utilize the phone itself, which is software. And the thing that is frustrating is they say the software is not good. It is. I don't see any issue or problems with the software. I can customize it. Every phone I get, I always custom. Never had that issue, ever. I've, I've used all types of brands of phones out there. I've been in the business for 20 years. I know what I'm talking about. You know, I'd rather you believe someone like me, who's a salesperson who's been doing this for many years, that is in between the industry and the consumer because I see it on both sides, all right? I'm the middleman, and I know what goes on. So when you hear these people complain about that, come on. That's like them saying, oh, it's a smartphone compared to a basic phone. Oh, it's not up to par with the smartphone. Really? I'm not a fanboy. Don't get me wrong, I'm not. But I love the phone. It works for me so far. All right? So, to me, it's a great phone. Try it out. You won't be disappointed. If you're an LG person, you will still love using this phone. And you know what's the great thing about it? Also, the one thing that all these other phones can't do that this phone, even though it has a dual screen on there, if you don't want to use both screens, I can hop it now to just use the main phone itself. There's no other phone can do it. None of these flagship phones can. Flagship phones, you don't see that dual screen capability. You don't see the 3.5 millimeter jack. They all got rid of it. The battery life is so much better. Do you see your people complaining about the Samsung? S20 Ultra. You know what's the biggest complaint? It costs too much. For $500, I get a better quality phone and a better price. Why? Because of the value. I get value. So, anyways, a little, little, little rant. Other than that, that's all I have. Take care. Thank you very much for watching this video. Comment down below if you can uh, let me know what you think please do give it a like I would like to know if you liked it or not uh, and um, 
you're not a subscriber, please do subscribe. I appreciate it if you can. Uh, I'll try to make more videos. We'll see. All right. Take care. Bye.